Hey, what is up guys? It's Linky, and today I wanted to talk about Baldur's Gate 3, the early access specifically, coming out on Tuesday, October 6th. I wanted to grab all of the race and class options and kind of put it into one video, just so it's easy to find so people know what's in the early access. Now not everything is going to be in early access, a lot of stuff will have to wait until the official launch of the game, but there is a good chunk of content that we can go through. So without further ado, let's get into the video. Baldur's Gate 3 is a turn-based RPG game made by Larian Studios. It is taking place in a Forgotten Realms setting, which is from Dungeons & Dragons from Wizards of the Coast. Baldur's Gate 3 will have a lot of heavy D&D themes to it, especially the type of system they're running, 5th edition, which is Wizards of the Coast's newest Dungeons & Dragons edition. Lumion Studios has stated that they will be trying to implement as much of 5th edition as they can in the game. Not everything's going to be in early access right off the bat, but by launch they should have most of the core rulebooks. Baldur's Gate 3 will have about 20 hours of gameplay. That includes 80 combat encounters, 45,980 English dialogue lines, 596 characters, and 146 spells or actions that you are able to perform. Character levels will go from 1 to 4 in early access. However, the official launch of the game will have the maximum level of 10. Moving on to character customization, you will be able to completely customize your own character, or if that's too much or you just don't feel like doing that, you can pick from five pre-made characters, Astarion, an elf vampire rogue, Gale, a human wizard, Lizelle, gith Yankee warrior, Shadowheart, half-elf cleric, or Will, a human warlock. If you're interested in creating your own character, you can pick from a multitude of different race options. We have the human, Githyanki, Elf, Drow, Half-Elf, Dwarf, Halfling, and Tiefling. Now some of these races have sub-race options that you can pick from that further customize your character, add different bonuses, benefits, or whatever. And we will talk more about that once we get to the specific races. The first race is the Human. They are the most versatile of all the races, gaining a plus one bonus to all of their ability score stats. So you got plus one bonus to strength, dexterity, constitution, intelligence, wisdom, and charisma. They are able to fit into most classes and playstyles, if not all of them, but they are a good all around balanced choice. Githyanki is the next choice for race. They are warriors from the Astral Plane, and they were previously enslaved to the Mind Flayers, which puts them at the forefront of this story, seeing as Mind Flayers are the main quote-unquote bad guys of Baldur's Gate 3. They get a plus one bonus to Int, so they are really good for any class that uses Int as a primary stat, being wizards or any other archetype that uses Int as a secondary stat, maybe like Eldritch Knight for the fighter, Arcane Trickster for the rogue, and other options. The elf race is the third option available to us, and you have two subclass options. Now, no matter which subclass option you pick, you will get a plus two bonus to your dexterity score. If you pick the high elf option, you will gain a plus one bonus to your intelligence score and an affinity for magic, meaning you can pick a cantrip to start out with at level one. If you pick the wood elf subclass, you will get a plus one bonus to your wisdom and you will also have an affinity for stealth, so you will be able to hide and sneak around a little bit easier. The next race option is the Drow. This one is a little different. In Core 5e, the Drow was a sub-race of the Elf. Here they are their own race, so I don't have specific information on their ability scores, but they do have two sub-race options, the Soldarian Drow and the Lulthsworn Drow. Lulthsworn are raised by a cult, worshipping the demon lord Lolf, and the Saldarian drow look to stop the Lolf sworn drow from completing their terror goals. After the drow we have the half-elf. Half-elves are offspring of elf and human, whether that be 
High Elf, Wood Elf, or Drow. You have a plus two bonus to your Charisma, and a plus one to two ability scores of your choice. So you have the plus two to Charisma, and then if you choose a plus one to your Dex and a plus one to your Intelligence, that can work. Con and Strength, Wisdom and Strength, whatever your choice is. There are three options for the Half Elf subrace. You have the High Half Elf, the Wood Half Elf, and the Drow Half Elf. Each one giving different bonuses, similar to the original race of those three. The next race option is the Dwarf. The Dwarf also has two sub race options. No matter which one you pick, you will get a plus two bonus to your constitution. If you pick the Gold Dwarves, you will get a plus one bonus to your wisdom. And if you pick the Shield Dwarf, you will get a plus two bonus to your strength. Next up, we have the Halfling race. They also have two sub race options. No matter which one you pick, you will get a increase to your dexterity score by two. If you pick the Lightfoot Halfling, you will gain a charisma score increase of plus one and get a bonus to stealth and hiding. If you pick the Strongheart Halfling, you will gain a plus one bonus to your constitution score and some resistance to poisons. And the final race option is the Tiefling. They also have sub-race options. They have three to choose from. Asmodeus, Mephistopheles, and Zario. Asmodeus and Mephistopheles have the same stat bonuses, gaining a plus two to your charisma score and a plus one to your intelligence. The difference being the Asmodeus Tiefling has an affinity for fire, whereas the Mephistopheles Tiefling has an affinity for arcane magic. And the Zariel Tiefling also gains the same plus two bonus to charisma, but instead of the intelligence bump, they gain a plus one to their strength. Moving on to classes, there will be six classes available in early access. The Cleric, Fighter, Ranger, Rogue, Warlock, and Wizard. Each class will have different subclass that customize and tweak the abilities a little bit. And depending on your playstyle or just whatever you're feeling, you can pick whatever you want. First up is the Cleric. The Cleric is a priestly champion who wields divine magic in service of a higher power, such as a god or deity. Their primary ability is Wisdom. They are usually a support class. You can heal, you can cast spells, but they don't have to be. There are some subclasses that allow you to dish out tons of damage. The three subclass options available in early access are the Light Domain, Life Domain, and Trickery Domain. And depending on which one you pick, it will change some of the spell options that are available to you and some of the class abilities. Next up is the Fighter. They are a master of martial combat, skilled with a variety of weapons and armor. Primary ability can be strength or dex of your choice, and they are, just as their name says, they fight. They are super combat heavy, they are versatile, um, you can almost use any weapon you want to, any set of armor, no armor. If you just want to get into combat and hit things, the fighter would probably be your class. The two subclass options that are available in early access are the Battlemaster and the Eldritch Knight. Battlemaster is all about fighting tactics, like tripping people, giving allies support, giving yourself an edge on you over your enemy, or making your enemy mess up somehow. Um, Eldritch Knight dips a little bit into magic, so you will gain very little access to spells, but those spells that you can gain access to can help a lot. The third choice is the Ranger. They are fighters and warriors who use martial prowess and nature magic to combat threats on the edge of civilization. The primary ability is Dexterity and Wisdom. The two subclass options for Rangers are Hunter and Beastmaster. Hunters will focus more on yourself and your hunting skills. You get different bonuses based on the types of enemies you're fighting. For Beastmasters, you get a companion. You can choose between some basic beasts like wolves, uh, bears, snakes, hawks, and you can level up them alongside yourself and you gain different abilities and they can do different things and they can attack for you, all of that fun stuff. The fourth option in early access is the rogue. Rogues are scoundrels who use stealth and trickery to overcome obstacles and enemies. Their primary ability is dexterity and they are the classic sneak around, stab you in the back kind of characters. The two 
Subclass options for early access are Arcane Trickster and Thief. Thief is just as it sounds. You will be able to sneak up and pickpocket, steal things a lot easier. For Arcane Trickster, similar to the Eldritch Knight for the fighter, you gain limited access to spells and you will be able to use those to your advantage in certain situations. The fifth class option is the Warlock. They are a caster class, They're, they use a lot of magic, but instead of studying it like wizards would, they've made packs with extra planar entities such as devils and demons or fey creatures. The primary casting ability is Charisma, and the two subclasses available in early access are the Fiend and the Great Old One. The Fiend is a devil, demon, like Asmodeus, or the Great Old One is Cthulhu, mythic horrors, stuff like that. You get like old gods, and depending on which subclass you pick, you get different spell choices, different class abilities, different things you can do throughout the game. And last but certainly not least, the Wizard. They are a complete soul magic user, and their primary ability is intelligence. They have the largest array of spells to choose from, many subclasses, but the two that are in early access are Evocation and Abjuration. Evocation is spells based in damage or destruction, and Abjuration are spells based in protection, warding, and defensive spells. That is all the information I wanted to go over today. There is a lot more stuff going into early access, like skills and abilities that each race gets and the classes get, but I just wanted to focus on the character customization between races and classes specifically, just on a surface level. I will be making more Baldigate videos in the future. Once early access is released, I will be playing it over on my Twitch channel. If you're interested in seeing that, I'll put the link in the description, and I will most likely be uploading videos to YouTube as well, whether it be playthroughs or more informational videos like this. But if you liked the video, please sure to leave a like, subscribe if you want to, and thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.